appearance when lightning issues forth from the east, which is also precisely the moment that I begin to speak, at the moment the lightning comes forth. The whole empire Ian is illuminated, and all the stars begin to transform. It seems as though the entire human race is subjected to a proper cleaning and sorting out. Under the glow of this shaft of light from the east, all of mankind is revealed in their original form, eyes dazzled, stymied in confusion, still less are they able to conceal their ugly features. Again, they are like unto animals fleeing from my light for refuge in mountain caves, yet, not one among them can be effaced from within my light. All human beings he in the grip of terror and alarm, all are waiting, all are watching, with the advent of my light, all rejoice at the day they were born, and likewise all are cursing the day they were born. Conflicting emotions are impossible to articulate, tears of self-castigation form rivers, and are borne away on the sweeping torrent, gone without trace in a twinkling. Once again, my day is pressing close upon the human race, once again arousing the human race, giving humanity a point from which to make a new beginning. My heart beats and, following the rhythms of my heartbeat, the mountains leap for joy, the waters dance with joy, and the waves, keeping time, beat upon the rocky reefs. It is difficult to express what is in my heart. I want all unclean things to burn up into ashes under my gaze, I want all the sons of disobedience to disappear from before my eyes, never more to linger on in existence. Not only have I made a new beginning in the dwelling place of the great red dragon, I have also embarked on new work in the universe. Soon the kingdoms of the earth will become my kingdom, soon the kingdoms of the earth will forever cease to exist because of my kingdom because I have already achieved victory, because I have returned triumphant. The great red dragon has exhausted every conceivable means to disrupt my plan, hoping to erase my work on the earth, but can I grow disheartened on account of its deceitful stratagems? Can I be frightened into losing confidence by its threats? There has never been a single being in either heaven or earth that I do not hold in the palm of my hand, how much the more is this true of the great red dragon, this device that serves as a foil to me? Is it not also an object to be manipulated with my hands? At the time of my incarnation in the human world, mankind arrived unwittingly at this day with the help of my guiding hand, came unwittingly to know me. But, as for how to walk the path that lies ahead, no one has any inkling, no one is aware, and still less does anyone have a clue as to the direction in which that path will take him. Only with the Almighty watching over him will anyone be able to walk the path to the end, only guided by the lightning in the east will anyone be able to cross over the threshold leading to my kingdom. Among men, there has never been one who has seen my face, one who has seen the lightning in the east, how much the less one who has heard the voice emanating from my throne. In fact, since the days of old, not one human being has directly come into contact with my person, only today, when I have come into the world, do men have a chance to see me. But even now, men still do not know me, just as they look only upon my face and hear only my voice, but without understanding what I mean. All human beings are like this. Being one of my people, do you not feel deep pride when you see my face? And do you not feel abject shame because you do not know me? I walk among men, and I live among men, for I have become flesh and I have come into the human world. My aim is not merely to enable humanity to look upon my flesh, more importantly, it is to enable humanity to know me. What is more, I will, through my incarnate flesh, convict humanity of his sins, I will, through my incarnate flesh, vanquish the great red dragon and stamp out its lair. Although the human beings that populate the earth are as numerous as the stars, I know them all as clearly as I see the palm of my own hand. 
and, though the human beings that love me are also as innumerable as the sands of the sea, only a few are chosen by me, only those that pursue the bright light, who are apart from those who love me. I do not overestimate man, nor do I underestimate him, rather, I make demands of man according to his natural attributes, and so what I require is the kind of man who sincerely seeks after me, this is in order to attain my goal in choosing men. There are wild beasts without number in the mountains, but they are all as tame as sheep before me, unfathomable mysteries lie underneath the ocean, but they present themselves to me as clearly as all things upon the face of the earth. In the empire eon above our realms that man can never reach, yet I walk about freely in those inaccessible realms. Man has never recognized me in the light, but has only seen me in the world of darkness. Are you not in exactly the same situation today? It was at the climax of the great red dragon's rampages that I formally put on the flesh to do my work. It was when the great red dragon revealed its true form for the first time that I bore witness to my name. When I walked about on the roads of mankind, not one being, not one person, was startled into wakefulness, and so when I was incarnate in the human world, nobody knew it. But when, in my incarnate flesh, I began to take up my work, then humanity awoke was startled out of his dreams by my thunderous voice, and from this moment commenced upon life under my guidance. Among my people, I have once again started upon new work. Having said that my work on the earth is not finished, this is sufficient to prove that those people of whom I spoke previously are not the ones I had perceived myself as needing, but nevertheless I am still counting. Chosen ones among these people, from this it becomes evident that I do this not only to enable my people to know the incarnate God, but also in order to cleanse my people. Due to the severity of my administrative decrees, a great majority of people are still in danger of being eliminated by me. Unless you make every effort to deal with yourself, to subdue your own body, unless you do this, you will assuredly become an object that I despise and reject, to be cast down into hell, just as Paul received chastisement directly from my hands, from which there was no escape. Have you perhaps discovered something in my words? As before, it is still my intention to cleanse the church, to continue to purify the people I need, because I am God himself, who is all holy and immaculate. I will make my temple not just iridescent with the colors of the rainbow, but also spotlessly clean, with an interior to match its exterior. In my presence, you should one and all think back on what you have done in the past, and decide whether you can today resolve to give me perfect satisfaction in my heart. It is not merely that man does not know me in my flesh, even worse, he has failed to understand his own self that resides in a fleshly body. How many years has it been, and all this time human beings have deceived me, treating me as a guest from outside? How many times have they shut me out from the door to their home? How many times have they, standing before me, paid me no heed? How many times have they renounced me in the midst of other men? How many times have they denied me in front of the devil? And how many times have they attacked me with their bickering mouths? Yet I do not keep account of man's weaknesses, nor do I on account of his disobedience ask for a tooth in return for a tooth. All I have done is to apply medicine to his illnesses, in order to cure his incurable diseases, thereby restoring him to health, so that he may at last come to know me. Has not all I have done been for the sake of humanity's survival, for the sake of giving humanity a chance at life? Many times I came into the world of men, but men did not, because I had come in my own person into the world, pay me any regard, instead, each went about his own affairs, seeking a way out for himself. 
Little do they know that every single road below the heavens comes out from my hands. Little do they know that every single thing below the heavens is subject to my ordination. Which one of you dares to harbor resentment in his heart? Which one of you dares? Likely to come to a settlement. I have just been quietly going about my work in humanity's midst, that is all. If, during the period of my incarnation, I had not cared for man's frailty, then all of humanity would, solely on account of my incarnation, have been frightened out of their wits and, as a result, fallen into hands. It is only because I humbled myself and hid myself away that humanity has escaped catastrophe, met deliverance from my chastisement, and in this way arrived at today. Mindful of how difficult it was to arrive at today, should you not cherish all the more the tomorrow that is still to come, 